Ah, oh, that was a lovely break. Preparing for spring break here. There we go. Um, this is an example of utility maximizing. There's a utility maximizing rule that says when you have a certain amount of income and you have choices about uh, how to spend your money in the simplest world possible, uh, a too good world where there are only two things that you can spend your money on, how do you know if you have purchased good A and good B in such a way that you have maximized the total utility from the uh, expenditure of that, of that particular amount of money? And the answer is, you can be assured with mathematical certainty that you have maximized if the following condition is satisfied. The marginal utility of the first good divided by its price must equal the marginal utility of the second good divided by its price. Um, what this really means is that the marginal utility per dollar rates are equal on the last units purchased of each good. If this condition is not satisfied, then it's possible to switch and uh, buy less of one and more of another and uh, with the same amount of money spent, get more total utility. So, in this instance, uh, if you're getting 250 utils on the sixth unit purchase, uh, and you paid ten dollars for each of these units, you're getting utils at the rate of twenty-five per dollar. Uh, whereas if you're getting eighty utils on each of these goods D, and you, you've this is the fifteenth that you purchased, and each unit of good B costs you two dollars, you're getting utils at the rate of forty per dollar. And you have not maximized because you have not satisfied the utility maximizing rule that on the last units purchased of the two goods, the marginal utility per dollar rates are equal. And if that's the case, then you can buy less of one. You buy less of the one that you, that you get less marginal utility from. That would be this one. So you give back units of this at 25 to 1 so that you can use that money to buy additional units of good B where you get utils at the rate of 40 to the dollar. And as you give these up, the law of diminishing returns says, um, as you give them up, the marginal utility goes up. And with these, as you buy more of them, the marginal utility will go down. And in this way, you tend to balance those marginal utility per dollar rates. All right, here's an example of consumer equilibrium. We're trying to maximize utility. Um, and we assume an income. That's the constraint, $20. The price of good A is 4 and the price of good B is 2 and so, with this uh, beer, naturally we're talking about root beer here, there, root beer, um, <clears throat> root, there. Um, when you buy the beer, uh, this is your uh, total utility. On the first, the first unit of uh, beer that you buy, you get 124 utils. So your marginal utility on that first one is 124. But then when you buy the second, you get an additional 108 utils. The third, you get an additional 96. The fourth, you get an additional 84, etc. It's how much this total increases as you, get, as you get one more unit of the good consumed. And now, if we assume that this beer costs $4 per unit, then when you spend, uh, the, when you spend $4, you get 124 utils. When you divide 124 by 4, which is the price, you're buying utils at the rate of 31 per dollar. So we have taken each of these marginal utils and divided by the price to get the marginal utility per dollar rates. Um, pretzels, on the other hand, pretzels cost two dollars, and when you buy the first unit of pretzels, you get 64 utils, which means your marginal utility is, I'm sorry, 84, 84 utils. You buy the second one, and your total goes from one from 84 to 164. That's a marginal utility of 80. You got 80 additional utils because you bought the second unit of pretzels. The third, you get an additional 60. Fourth, marginal utility is 48, 42, etc. But each unit of pretzels costs you two dollars. So um, when you buy this first unit of pretzels, you get 84 marginal utils but you pay two dollars and so that's forty two per dollar forty per dollar etc so these are your marginal utility per dollar rates and now the question is if you have twenty dollars to spend how many will you buy of each item and the answer is just go shopping um, 
when you f buy the first unit, you can buy either the first unit of pretzels and get 42 euros per dollar, or the first uh, beer get 31 per dollar. So you take this one, the 42 per dollar. Then your next choice is to buy the second pretzels and get 40 euros per dollar, or the first beer get 31. So you take the second batch of pretzels. Then your choice is 30 on the third bag of pretzels, or 31 on the first beer. So you get 31. Then it's 30 again on the pre uh, so you buy pretzels next. Then uh, next you would buy your choice is 24 versus 27. So you buy the 20 the second unit of beer, and then. Um, on the last units, it's 24 and 24. And if you work out the money, you have now spent your $20. And when you spend the $20, you have purchased three units of beer and four units of, uh, of uh, pretzels. And since beer costs $3, three I'm sorry, $4, 3 times 4 is 12, and uh, pretzels cost $2. You bought four, so that's eight dollars for a total of twenty dollars. You have spent your income, twenty dollars. And so that's how you've maximized. And if you were to buy any other combination, for instance, if you were just to spend all your money on, um, on um, beer here, uh, with twenty dollars you could buy five. But on the last units purchased, you'd be getting eighteen uh, utils per dollar, when if you had spent that money instead on pretzels, you would have been getting forty-two per dollar. So if you give up this beer, you can get lots more utils from pretzels. And that maximization, you can only, you can make that trade as long as these ratios are unequal. But when they're equal, you can't switch out of one and into another and be better off. Okay, so our next question then, of course, is, what happens if the price of pretzels changes from $2 to $4? So what we've done is we have only changed the price of pretzels. Our income is still 20. The price of beer is still uh, 4. The utility, total, marginal, and utility per dollar for, for beer has not changed. Over here with pretzels, the total utility of pretzels has not changed. The marginal utility has not changed. But the marginal utility per dollar has changed because now each of these units cost $4 where it used to cost 2. So it, on the first unit purchased of pretzels, where before you got 42 utils per dollar. Now you have to divide the 84, do, uh, 84 utils by 4, which is the price of pretzels now, and you only get 21 utils per dollar. You divide the second unit, uh, 80 utils by 4, and you're getting utility at the rate of 20 per dollar now. So because the price of pretzels has gone up, the marginal utility per dollar rates have gone down, because that's the denominator. So now if you still have $20 and you have it to spend, how do you uh, spend it? And the answer is, well, the same way. The first uh, unit of pretzels will now give you 21 utils per dollar. The first beer would give you 31. And so you buy the first unit of root beer, of course. And now your choice, having bought that, is to buy the second root beer, 27 utils per dollar, versus the first pretzels, 21. Uh, you do that. And then your next choice is 24 versus 21, you buy the 24. And then 21 and uh, 21, right there. So, and now you've spent the money, because you bought five items, each cost $4. So when the price of pretzels goes to $4, you buy one unit of pretzels and one, two, three, four of uh, root beer. So four times four is $4 each is $16 you would spend on four uh, root beers and now pretzels cost four dollars and so this is four dollars on that one unit of pretzels and you have spent twenty dollars. So what has happened here that is interesting is that the only thing that changed was the price of one of the goods, pretzels in this case, and sure enough you bought less or this consumer buys less and uh, so, oops, this should be one should be. When the price of, uh, of uh, beer, I'm sorry, when the price of pretzels is uh, $2, the quantity purchased would be, how many was it? Four. Four pretzels. But when the price of pretzels goes to $4, there's only one purchased now. And if we organize this a little bit, when the price is $2, the 
consumer will buy four. When the price is four dollars, they buy one. We organize it this way. When the price is four dollars, the quantity is only one. When the price is two dollars, the quantity is four. Now, guess what? I don't know if you've seen this before, but this is a demand relationship. And the law of demand says that when the price of a good goes up, oops, when the price of a good goes up, the quantity purchased will go down every time. And there are two reasons for this decrease. One is the income effect of a price change, and the other is the substitution effect of a price change. The income effect says if the price of principles goes up, you can't buy as many of the two goods as you could before because the $20 just doesn't buy as much because the price of pretzels is now higher. Um, that's the income effect of a price change and that certainly exp uh, helps explain why the consumer would buy fewer pretzels when the price goes from two to four. But I can kill the income effect. Boom! I'm gonna kill the income effect and here's how I'm gonna do it. Uh, they bought three and four three and four when the price of pretzels was uh, two dollars three uh, root beer and four pretzels uh, the kid doesn't have enough money now that the price of pretzels is four dollars uh, they would need four times seven is twenty eight dollars they would need twenty eight dollars to buy that original combination so I say let's increase the income to twenty eight dollars will the kid now or will this consumer buy the same combination of these two goods uh, well, let's find out. Uh, when they spend $20, we know that we're up to uh, four units of root beer and one unit of uh, pretzels. So they still have $8 uh, left to spend. What would they buy next? 18 on the next uh, beer and uh, 20 on the next pretzels. So they would buy... Okay, even after I kill the income effect by giving the kid enough money to buy the old quantity uh, of beer and pretzels, that is, um, that they had before, that would be a four and four, four, no, four and three, then they have enough. They can buy seven units of something that's four dollars and pretzels are now four. So the question is, with the twenty-eight dollars, would the kid buy that same quantity as before? And the answer is no. They'd buy first the um, um, root beer, the second they'd buy the root beer, twenty-seven versus twenty-one, twenty-four versus twenty-one, twenty-one versus, there's the uh, original uh, quantity, but then we've still got two more, um, we've got eight more dollars to spend, so they would buy next, they would buy this one because it's twenty euros per dollar versus eighteen, and then they would buy this one. So they would be buy five units of uh, root beer, five units of root beer, and one, uh, two units of pretzels. So even after you've killed the income effect, they don't buy four units, they have enough money to buy four, but they only buy two because the utility per dollar rates are now less attractive for pretzels and more attractive for root beer. So that's the substitution effect of a price change. So we've gone through it. We've talked about utility, we've talked about constraints, we've talked about budgets, we've talked about marginal utility, utility per dollar, the law of diminishing marginal utility. We've given you an example of, a, of somebody with a, a certain income and um, a, a utility structure, and then we've shown how to maximize utility, and they have satisfied the utility maximizing rule. Then we changed the price of one good, we changed nothing else, and sure enough, when the price of that good went up with nothing else changed, the quantity went down, and that was because of both the income effect of a price change and the substitution effect of a price change. Now, this utility business is useful for a number of, uh, ex of um, applications, and one of, uh, we could, well, here's a maximizing application. It's how an economist chooses a mate rationally. Now, we assume that there's a constraint, only one a spouse, uh, that uh, people attempt to maximize, and that there are choices. So, here's the choice. Person A, person A, look at that, person A is smiling here. Uh, you uh, date them, you check their credit scores, you meet their parents, their family, their friends, etc. And you're attempting to assess what will be your average daily util rate if you marry this person. And with good old person A, we'll call her Alice. I'm just doing this males and females, but it works in any combination. Um, 
Alice would give you 100 yudels a day. Uh, Bertha here, you've checked her out, you expect 250 a day. Oh, look at this, candy. Candy is dandy, 1,000 yudels a day. Uh, Delta, I don't think so. 25 a day. And, and good old Ethel. Ethel, 300 yudels a day. So given this information, which would you choose? Come on, who is it? Candy. Candy is dandy, you say. Ah, if you use this method, then you will make the divorce lawyers in this country even richer than they are. And why? Because it's true. There are benefits, that's true, marginal benefits. But are there marginal costs? Yes. So the same information process requires that you assess the marginal costs of each of these people. And guess what? Alice here, she'll give you 100 yudels a day, but she'll cost you uh, 50. So you're getting yudels at the rate of 2 to 1. Boom and Bertha here, uh, cost you 50 also. She, you're getting yudels here at the rate of 5 to 1. Candy is indeed dandy, but the disutil cost, the disutil per day rate is 2,000. You're getting uh, 0.5 utils for every one disutil. Candy's out there. Watch out for candy. Uh, Delta, even though she is not very exciting, she's very low maintenance. She's only going to cost you like six disutils a day. And supercharged death is going to cost you 50. You get 6 to 1 here. So who would you choose? Ethel. Supercharged ethyl. Do you understand? Because you get the best ratio of utils to disutils. And of course, it's, it's expected marginal benefits and marginal costs. Uh, you have to make your best guess about the future, so it's risky. Uh, but what would happen if you permitted polygamy? That's more than one. Who would you pick next then? What is this rate? It's a uh, yeah, four? No, no, let's do this. Yeah, two. What the heck? Twelve per dollar. Oh, no, no, never mind. So who would you get next? You'd probably do uh, Boom and Bertha here. Five to one. I forgot what Delta's up to here. And what if you could clone? What if you could clone? Uh, if you would get 300, would you get 300 from a second uh, ethyl here? Or is ethyl subject to the law of diminishing marginal ethyls? She is. So the point is, the law of diminishing returns, this is just a method for uh, solving a problem or setting up a problem. Um, this income and substitution effect was uh, applied by uh, Sam Peltzman from the University of Chicago. And he was studying safety statistics for cars that had airbags and those that didn't. And what they found was that um, what they found was that it appeared that sure enough the airbags were saving lives in the cars that had them, but people outside the airbag cars were dying in larger numbers. And that there is a substitution effect that when you substitute uh, airbags for recklessness, it lowers the cost of recklessness and people substitute recklessness for care. So um, apparently the people were driving more recklessly. And so it turns out that incentives matter. That if you want people to drive safer, you don't put an airbag in the steering column, put a dagger in the steering column. Uh, that way you will get very safe drivers. I, I, don't, I don't really recommend this as a policy action. All right, that's utility in three-part harmony. That's it.